Hello and welcome to this video on drawing a straight line using its equation. Now in the previous video we saw that we could think of the equation of a line as some kind of membership rule and it's a membership rule that dictates whether a point, a coordinate, is allowed to belong on the line. So let's just say I had a particular point um, and I knew that the x value was 2 then what would the y value be such that this point obeys this rule, it obeys the membership rule? Well, if x was 2, well, 2 plus what is equal to 2? Well, the y value would be, have to be 0. And then if the y value was 0, then it does obey the rule. Look, 2 plus y is 0, 2 plus 0 is equal to 2. So I could therefore plot that point on my axis, so that would be 2, 0. I could choose a different value, so let's say that x was equal to 1. What would the y value have to be to obey this rule? Well, 1 plus 1 would give you 2. So the point 1, 1 is on the line, and that would be here. And note, by the way, that you only need two points in order to draw a straight line. If I've got a point here and I've got a point here, well, there's only one line that can go through these two points, and it has to go like that, doesn't it? So we're going to use that principle to answer these questions here. Now, what you'll often get in an exam paper is you'll be given an equation like this, and they'll give you a table with the particular x values, and they want you to work out the y value such that this equation is satisfied for each point. So let's do this first one. We've got y is equal to 2x minus 1. And then we've got this table here. Now let's try and do these in our head. If the x value was minus 2, what would the y value have to be to satisfy this equation? Well, let's substitute the minus 2 into this equation. That's the key point. We substitute the values of x and y into the equation to work out the other value. So if x is minus 2, 2 times minus 2, positive times negative, is negative, so it's minus 4. Then we're subtracting 1, so minus 4 minus 1 is minus 5, and y is equal to minus 5, so y must be minus 5. And let's do it with the next one. If x was minus 1, well, let's substitute into this equation. 2 times minus 1 is minus 2, and then we're subtracting 1, that's minus 3. So y equals minus 3. Now it's getting easier now because we've got positive values or 0. 2 times 0, x is 0, is 0. Minus 1 is minus 1, so y value is minus 1. If x is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, and then subtract 1 is 1, so y equals 1. y is 1. And can you see, actually, there's a pattern here that the y value is going up by 2 each time. And that's expected because this number here in front of the x, that is known as the gradient. We'll see the general equation of a straight line in subsequent videos, but the number in front of x is the gradient, and that tells us for each time x goes up by 1, what does the y value change by? And you can see, indeed, it's changing by 2 each time. It's going up by 2. And then, hence, draw the line with equation y equals 2x between x minus 2 and 2. So if we were to draw this, you would usually have some axes, but I'm going to do it quickly like this. So let's put these points on here. And remember, if it's a straight line, you only really need two points. So we could plot the minus 2, minus 5. So minus 2, minus 5 is down here. You would usually have a much better axis. Um, and then we have 2, 3, which is here. And then we can join them up with a straight line, obviously making use of a ruler. So it's going to look like that. Now let's do these other questions. We want to draw the line with these particular equations. So y equals 2. Now, this is a membership rule which says whatever the point is, the y value always has to be equal to 2. So, if I do a very rough sketch, can you think of a coordinate where the y value is 2? Well, I could pick 0, 2. 0, 2 is here. And the y value is 2, so it obeys this membership rule. I could pick another point. I could pick 3, 2. The y value is 2, so it obeys this membership rule. And now we've got two points, so it means we can now draw it and you can see this is a horizontal line. If it's y equals something, it's a horizontal line that cuts the y-axis at 2. So if it's y equals 2, it cuts the y-axis at 2, and it's horizontal. What about the next one? So that was a, we've got b now, we've got x is equal to minus 3. And that's going to be very similar, but it's going to cut the x-axis at minus 3. So the x-axis of minus 3, we've got minus 3 here, and it's going to be a vertical line this time. And again, if we pick any point on this line, 
it's going to obey this membership rule because any point we pick on here, the x value is free, and so it must obey this. So you see, we've now got y equals x, which is a bit more complicated. And this is a membership rule that says whatever the x value is, the y value has to be equal to that x value. So why don't we try and pick a few points? We only need two points to draw a straight line. Um, if x was 0, what does y have to be? If x is 0, y has to be 0. They have to be the same. So we've got 0, 0. If x was 3, what does y have to be? Well, y also has to be 3. So we could pl plot the point 3, 3. And then we draw in it up with a straight line. So y equals x, that's a very standard example that you just need to know how to draw outright. y equals x is a diagonal line at 45 degrees that goes through the origin like that. And what about y equals minus x? Well, this membership rule is saying whatever the x value is, y is minus that x value. So if we pick a couple of points again, if x was 0, y is equal to minus 0, which is still 0. So it goes through 0, 0. And if x was free, what is y? Well, y minus 3. So it would be 3 minus 3. The y value is negative the x value. Or let's say x was negative 2. Then y would be minus minus 2, which would be positive 2. So it would also go through minus 2, 2. And then we can draw a straight line. We only actually needed two points there but we get a line like this. So it's 45 degrees, again, going through the origin, but it's going downhill. So remember these two particular examples. And also, if you ever saw y equals some constant, some number, or if x is equal to number, you should be able to just sketch it just outright without having to think too much. Right, we've now got y is equal to 2x. Again, let's just use a couple of example values of x. Uh, I always tend to try x is 0, so if x is 0, 2 times 0 is 0, so y would be equal to 0. So it goes through 0, 0. Let's say that x was equal to 3. What would y be? Well, y would be 2 times 3, which is 6. So when x is 3, y is 6. So let's put that there. 3, 6. And it's going to look like that. So it's going to go through the origin, and it's going to be a bit steeper than y equals x. So let's do these final few. We've got x plus y is equal to 5. Now, we drew a similar one to these earlier. So, give us some axes. And again, let's just pick some example values of x. And don't be upset that we, we have more things than just y on the left-hand side of the equation. We can put the straight line equation in any form. We can put both x and y on one side. We could have the y on the left and the x on the right, etc. It doesn't matter, as long as we don't have any squares or anything like that. So, if x was 0, what would y have to be? Well. 0 plus 5 would give 5. So if x was 0, y would have to be 5. So we've got 0, 5. And remember, you can choose whatever values of x you like. It really doesn't matter. You just pick two value, different values of x, and I would make sure that the values of x you pick are far apart. So I wouldn't now, for example, pick x equals 1, because the reason is you'll have two points which are quite close together. And when you come to draw a line through those two points, just a tiny little error will make your line quite inaccurate. So I would pick a value of x which is uh, further away. So let's say x was 5, what would y be? If x was 5, 5 plus 0 would be equal to 5. So when x is 5, y is 0, so we go through 5, 0, and then we join up with a line. So in general, whenever you see the equation x plus y equals a number, basically you get a line that goes through the x-axis and the y-axis through that particular number. So you can see it cuts the y-axis at 5, it cuts the x-axis at 5. And that happens because we have x plus y equals, and then that number, 5. Right, what about g? We've got y equals half x plus 1. And again, just pick two values of x. So x is equal to 0, say. Half times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. So when x is 0, y would be 1. And let's just say x was equal to, well, let's find an even number, because then we can half it more easily. Let's say x was equal to 8. If x is 8, half times 8 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So y would be equal to 5. So we've got 8, 5. So let's say it was here. And then it's going to go like that straight line going on forever. And very final one, which is the hardest, we've got 2x plus 3y is equal to 6. Again, let's do exactly the same thing. If x was equal to, say, 0, 
that gives us what? Well, 2 times 0 is 0, plus 3y equals 6. So if that's 0, that gets wiped out. 3y is equal to 6, so y would have to be 2, because 3 times 2 is 6, so y would be 2. So let's put 0, 2. Let's put it here. And then what about if... Well, we could try a value of x, but we could also try a value of y. So let's just say we made y 0. Then we've got 2x plus 3 times 0, which is just 0. So we've got 2x equals 6. So if 2x is 6, then x would have to be 3. So we've got x is 3 and y is 0. 3, 0 would be somewhere like here. And then we've got our two points, so we can join it up like this. So you can see this is sort of similar to that, but because we have these numbers in front of the x and y, that changes the sort of the angle of the line.